a scanning electron microscope. I mean, that sounds cool. It is cool. So explain why is it so cool? It's super expensive. Oh, that'd be that's to start with. Yeah. So what it is, is it scans electron beams of low energy over very small areas so that then you can focus in really, really small and see what's happening. I mean, like, we're saying really small. We're talking really small. Yeah, like, like 300 oh, microns yes. is the, yes. like yes. the scale. Yeah, that's the scale. That's so, a, you can, yeah, like this, but 300 microns. Like itty bitty. So I had to do the math because I'm like dumb, right? That's 11 thousandths of an inch. Yep. That's tiny. Very tiny. So why is that useful for the testing we've been doing? Because if you've watched our previous videos, you already know who this guy is. Introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm Peter Lee. I'm here at Southwest Research Institute where we do a lot of work on oils and engine parts and so on. And we've been working with Lake. And if you haven't seen the previous videos, you need to go back and watch them. Yeah, you should. Because yeah. you're going to be lost if you don't. Yeah. So watch them now, then come back to here. These are liner sections. We've got holes in them because we fix them down on the base of something. And when we put a ring section on and we reciprocate the ring section. So if you look really, really closely on this, you can see in the middle, it looks different. And that's because that's where it's been reciprocating backwards and forwards. So what we've done with the electron microscope is we've looked inside the wear bit and outside the wear bit so we can compare it. Absolutely, and we're gonna show you the pictures here in a few minutes of all the different variables because our test matrix got- Oh, it got silly. Yeah, so we've varied surface finish. Yep. From fairly rough surfaces to fairly smooth surfaces. Yep. Coatings. We, we changed coating, went from an uncoated ring to different coatings of rings. And then two layers of coating. Right, and then we've got something special for you later. Oh yeah. And then we also ran different oils because it's running in a bath of oil. Yep. And we've analyzed all those oils and we've now measured all the surfaces so we can yep. see the wear, we measure the friction. The neat thing is to come back and say, okay, this one section that had very low wear from the oil analysis, what does that liner does it, look like? Yeah, what does it look like? If Not it's got just, low wear, does it look like it's low wear? Or does it look like it's just had been smeared and moved around so it's not wet? It's pretty neat to be able to take that unrun section, the run section, because you can see the change from, if it didn't have valleys to begin with, it didn't stand a chance in the end. I'll just go ahead and spoiler alert, right? You're, you're gonna see that as you go through this. Yeah. The ones that had some valleys at the beginning had the best chance of still having valley at the, at the end, which is why the honing process is so vitally important. We talk about it all the time in a bunch of other videos. You're not gonna have good longevity. You're not gonna have good long ring seal if you don't have the proper surface finish. So you gotta have that. But to get to the low wear, to get to the low friction, that's where the ring coatings, oil chemistry, yep. That's the thing. They that, all in, interplay with each other. You know, it isn't just one or the other. They've got to play nicely together. It's synergy. It's, yes. it's, it's like chemistry, actually. It is chemistry. Yeah. But then, yeah, it's chem right. then it's chemistry and it's hardware. So it's kind of... The synergy of them all makes actually, it... Do you know what it is? What's that? Tribology. It is tribology. He's so right. <laughs> That's why we love tribology. That's why we come hang out here. Because it's fun stuff. We learn cool things and we get to share them with you. So let's go ahead and jump right to showing you the results. Our first variable in this giant matrix is surface finish. And like we just talked about, if you don't have enough valley to begin with, you're not gonna end with enough valley and, and you gotta have that valley to reduce wear. What we're seeing right here is the before and the after using the CRN coated ring with the API SP oil. And you can see that that beginning finish has been plateaued finish, so it doesn't have a bunch of peaks, but it has some valley. And you can see that even after doing the running cycle, we're producing 80 parts per million wear with a 0.16 coefficient of friction. You can still visibly see those valleys there left. 
Now we can zoom in a little bit closer and you can see it even more distinctively. Those deeper valleys there, you still see some of that jagged rough material from the honing process. But as it's worn, you can see it, there's still some valleys left even under that higher magnification. Now what happens when you don't have that plateaued finish? Well, here's that single grit finish. Yeah, you can see a little bit of valley there, but the reality, what you see more of are those peaks and what's happened, it's all gone. There's almost no valley left after the same running conditions and much higher where we're now up to 142 parts per million of iron in the used oil. That's 142 parts per million of wear in this case and see that friction goes way up 0.28 coefficient of friction. This is just ugly and when you zoom in, it doesn't get any prettier. You can see those peaks from that honed surface and everything's pretty much wiped out and gone. Yeah, it's just not pretty. So surface finish, huge variable. Now, what happens if we just change the oil chemistry? And like we kind of alluded to, it is a big variable. So going from the API SP oil, it's 5W30, which is limited in the amount of ZDP. So this is a maximum 800 parts per million ZDP oil. You're generating 53 parts per million wear with a 0.16 coefficient of friction. Now what is interesting is when you go to the break-in oil, which is a non-API oil with essentially three times the amount of ZDP, and only a third of the amount of calcium detergent, boy, you see that wear drop significantly and you can see the end result with your eyes. There's still visible valley left. That finish looks like it's basically been honed. Not a lot of wear with the breaking oil, but that higher level of friction, the 0.22, that pretty much goes along with what we normally see with ZDDP. ZDDP is great at reducing wear, but it doesn't reduce friction. That's right, friction and wear, two different phenomena like we mentioned in the previous video, and here's the living proof of that. We can reduce wear while we increased friction. Now the next thing is we can get into the variable of the ring coatings themselves. So we're gonna maintain that API SP oil, we're gonna maintain the surface finish, but now we're just gonna step through changes in coatings of the ring. We're gonna begin with an uncoated ring, and sure enough, we have 108 parts per million wear, a 0.19 coefficient of friction. You can see that ring, you can see that wear mark on it, but then when we go to the coated ring, the CRN coated ring, boy, that wear drops right down to 67 parts per million with a 0.16 one six coefficient of friction. So we're right there in that same range of friction and wear that we've seen previously with the API SP oil, with the coated ring, everything looks pretty normal there, but we can go one step better than that. We can go to this dual layer coating. You can see it right here. So we have a softer coating over the CRN and man, look at that wear go down. We're down to 50 parts per million wear with a coefficient of friction of 0.15. So less wear, less friction, even with the same oil, dual layer coating is looking really good. Oops, until it comes off. And there's the problem. When it delaminates, now you see the wear go up, the friction go up, and that's not what we're after here. And you can see it in the rings themselves. The surfaces that were rougher that produce more wear, so you can see more wear on the face of the ring compared to the rings that ran on the smoother, more plateaued surface. So that single grit rough finish is generating more wear, not only on the liner itself, but also on the ring. And the white light summaries show that. When we go in there and we look at the optical profilometer, that 3D look at the wear track, You've got the scale of red, green, and blue showing you what's going on. And in this case, you want to see one color, not a whole bunch of colors. It doesn't want to look like a rainbow. The ones that look like a rainbow, that's a lot of wear. The one that looks like the same color the whole way through, that's less wear. And we can really see it. So all of it correlates together to paint that picture. That surface finish, ring material, and the coatings all come together to provide the protection that is required. If you get one of them wrong, 
things go wrong really quickly. When we first went over all the data, my mind was fried, and now it's fried again anew. Uh, it's always fried. There's so much data. <sighs> there was, but there was. at least we were able to kind of take that mountain of data and kind of put it into a couple of groups. You know, we yeah. could start, focus start on the to understand. coatings, yep. surface finish, oil chemistry. We've got a feel for it. Yeah. But it's a bit more complicated than some of that because, of course, all those interplay with each other, but that's just... That's, yes. I don't think even we've managed to get a handle on that problem. No, two plus two does not equal four no. in this world. No. You wish it did. You would pray that it would. Pretty complex. Right, because sometimes one plus two equals five. Yeah. And sometimes two plus two is two, and you're like, <laughs> I don't understand this. Yep, yeah, there was a lot there. Right, but there was one thing that came out of all of this. Coatings. Yes. Gotta have the right coatings. Yeah. And that kind of led us onto an idea. Yeah, it did. The best coatings for running in are soft ones. Yep. But they're gonna wear away and then you don't have a coating. Right. And then you're back to no coating on the liner, which we've already seen is not good. No good, yeah. But what if you had a soft coating on top of a hard coating? Well, we kind of tried that we tried that and as long as the coating stays intact it, it worked works. pretty good yeah the problem was almost half the time just delaminated and right. came off and then it was bad again yeah so what if you had a hard coating that became a soft coating by that i mean while you're placing the coating on there you make it hard and as you get right near the end of the coating process you make it soft Mm -hmm. So there's no delamination, it's all the same coating. Right, but it's a variable hardness within yes. the coating. Yes. Can that be done? Oh yes. Well, we didn't, we didn't know to start with, but we've done it and we've tried it and it works. It works really good. So, if you stayed around this long, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, because we're not going to tell you the results now. No. No. Stay tuned, there's more videos to come. More research, both here and at Engine Dyno. We're going to show you how that variable hardness coating works in the real world and how much of an improvement it is over the stuff we just showed you.